let's talk about the origin point and how important it is for hard surface modeling and i'm going to show you some really cool practical examples so origin point for those of you who don't know is that little dot here inside you can change the size of it if you want to if you go to preferences themes 3d viewport scroll down you can change it here seven pixels seems to be the best size for it in my opinion but you know fiddle with it if you want to now origin point is by default in the middle of anything that you add in blender so if you add a sphere for example right you're gonna see the origin point in the middle if you're gonna add a cube it's gonna be in the middle as well etc but it doesn't really define the middle of the object it's a different thing it's just a reference point in fact, you can move it to whatever you want, to an edge, face, vert, even in space. You know, I could move my cursor here, shift S with machine tools and move it to cursor, which is going to end up here, right? Now, by the way, I'm using machine tools to show you this because machine tools is one of the most important add-ons and most useful add-ons for hard surface modeling. It's so important that we are using it in our course, the hard surface accelerator, which is for beginners, intermediate. And this course teaches you how to understand all the basics, all the foundations of modeling, but also how to become better at modeling, better at understanding forms, you know, design, detailing, rendering, all these subjects necessary for you to, you know, to have fun modeling hard service in Blender and not getting frustrated. So if you're interested, grab the course. We have over, well over 4,000 students, close to like 5K now, tons of testimonials. You can go ahead now on Discord as well with 8,000 people, ask around, plenty of people have the course there or read the testimonials on our page. There are all screenshots from people we received on, you know, YouTube, Facebook, emails, Discord, right? And the curriculum is very tight. And like I said, it's gonna teach you all the most important things in a really short span of time. And it's gonna give you this amazing confidence of command of tools and knowing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. So go ahead and grab it. The link is in the video description. and in the comment pinned underneath the video. So now going back here, let me show you some really cool stuff uh, that you can do with Origin Point and also why you should be using uh, machine tools and not uh, the, you know, uh, the vanilla, the vanilla tools, okay? So first of all, the Origin Point is going to be a point of reference for transformation, which is going to be scaling, rotating or moving but also for stuff like mirrors. So if I'm going to, you know, duplicate this object here and shift click this one Alt Z with hard ops and mirror it, then you will see that it's going to get mirrored across this origin point. So the mirror is going to be, um, you know, dead on the origin point. Now here's where interesting things can happen. You can move the origin point. That's number one. So let's just select the face here, shift S and move origin point to face. Now here's the first thing. This is why I'm not using, um, you know, Vanilla Blender because Vanilla Blender is clunky as hell and I will show you this on the example of this cube. If I want to move this origin point to the face, what I would need to do is, you know, go to tab, press two for faces, select the face, go here to mesh, snap cursor to select it then go to object mode then go back here and then I would need to go to origin and snap to cursor, right? And then I will need to move the cursor back to the origin. So again, shift S with vanilla tools and to origin. A lot of clicks, okay? In, you know, with machine tools, it's really simple because all you need to do is go to edit mode, select the face, shift S, two face, and you're done, okay? Very quick. Now, another thing that you can do with a machine tools, which is, um, you know, um, good luck doing that in vanilla, especially that easily, is to be able to rotate the origin point. This is really important because watch this. If I'm going to move this origin point here, shift S and to edge, my origin point will rotate. You can't see that, but look what happens when I'm going to add a mirror, right? So you see what I mean? is rotated. Now, why is it rotated and why is it rotated to this specific angle? Well, if you enable normals, so you go here and enable normals right on the face, you see that each of these faces, right, has a normal or like four normals going from the verts going up, which means this face normals face up and this face normals face to the left. So if I duplicate this face, you will see it very clearly. OK, see that? That's how it works, right? So now the average between these two faces, right, is going to be 45 degrees, which is exactly how this origin point got rotated. So it's really, really important to understand that, okay? 
Now, the reason why it's important, because, for example, stuff like mirror is going to start working off of these origin points. So you can do stuff like this, okay? In addition, what you can do, you can rotate your cursor as well. So watch this. If I select this edge and move the cursor as is to this edge, it's going to rotate it. Now, if I don't want my cursor to rotate or I don't want my origin point to rotate, well, first of all, what I could do is select all these edges, right? Um, and shift S and move the cursor to uh, to the edges, which is going to move it. But you see that rotation is going to be still messed up, right? So a better way of doing this will be select faces and moving this to faces, right? Which is going to reset it. Another way you can do this because the object now is in the middle of the world origin, you could move the cursor to origin. Now, if I'm going to move this origin point back to cursor, right? At the moment it's rotated, it's going to inherit the rotation of the cursor watch, right? To cursor, see what I mean? So now if I'm going to move this origin point back to an edge, but I'm going to hold alt, right? So hold alt and click here on edge. It's going to move, but my origin point will not rotate. And I can do stuff like this. So you see, it's extremely powerful if you understand how it works and how to use it. Another way of using this would be to align stuff. And I showed you this in my previous videos, but I'll show you again. If I rotate this, my origin point will rotate with the object, right? Because it's going to enter the local orientation, which is this one, right? Now, if I want to align something to that object, I'll be aligning it to the origin point using machine tools. So if I select this one and this one, right, and press Alt A, you need to have align tool enabled in preferences in machine tools for this to work. But now I can, you know, for example, you know, I could um, array this around this um, cylinder by simply moving my cursor to select it, which is again going to inherit the rotation, selecting that cube in the middle and going to Q with hard ups and control clicking on radial array, pressing D for displacement and Bob Jankel, right? So again, very powerful stuff, right? Another way you can use this origin point is for snapping. So if I have a cube here and I'm going to move my origin point here to the face and I'm going to now move my cursor to the face here in the top, right? I can align or move uh, this cube uh, to cursor because whatever you, you know, you add now in the scene is going to get added on the cursor, right? So if I'm going to move this one to cursor, my origin point is going to snap the cursor. So shift S and I'm going to move it to cursor, right? Now, the reason why you may be confused is like when my cube jumped in here is because it got flipped. Remember, if you don't hold out with machine tools, it's going to rotate the object, right? So now you select the cube and if you want to move it here and stack it on top here, what you need to do is hold out. So shift S, right? And then hold out and move to cursor and it's going to snap on top. You see how it works? So once you get this, you know, into your muscle memory, right? It's going to be very powerful. And now watch this. If you go into, for example, now switch it to individual origins, right? And if I'm going to scale this cube here, it's going to scale on the origin, which means it will not basically detach itself from this flat surface here. It's going to be perfectly still aligned on the top of my surface because if my original point was inside of this geometry, it would basically start scaling towards the original point. You see what I mean? So yeah, that's really powerful stuff. The same goes to all the modifiers like mirroring, solidification, arrays, but also parenting, right? Because when you parent something, it's going to get parented based off of origin points. So if my origin point here is in a corner, right? So I'm going to move it here, okay? And I'm going to parent these two objects, right? So Control P and Object Keep Transform. You see that origin points will get linked. You, you will be linking objects through origin points, right? So now if I want to, for example, scale this or, you know, mirror this or whatever, um, it's going to always take into consideration this origin point. It's really important to, you know, to understand that. And the same goes to stuff like, for example, armature and bones. So if you, you know, you're using this for animation, you also be going to be doing it off of the origin point. So to sum it up, origin points is a really important thing. It's not the middle or center of an object. It's a reference point for stuff like, you know, rotation, right? For, you know, scaling, for, you know, mirroring, etc. And you can move it to various parts. And if you use machine tools, then you can also rotate it with ease. 
and you don't have to go through all these shenanigans, you know, with all these menus here, which is insane. And it's just going to save you a lot of time and headache. And if you are a bit more advanced in Blender and you already know what the hell is going on, then I would actually recommend you grab our different course, which is going to be the ultimate guide to hard ups and box cutter, which is going to teach you how to work very effectively, not just with machine tools, but also with these other two add-ons, which is hard ups and box cutter. And there's a quite a lot to learn. The course is extremely robust, is 22 hours long. You don't have to watch the whole thing, but it's basically explaining everything. Is divided into very logical parts. There is a very simple section on my personal workflow, which is really simple. You can get it just in a couple hours. And then there is a section on modeling, which you can actually learn how I use it every day. But there's also advanced section on all these settings here that no one really talks about, but some of them are very powerful and very useful and could be very beneficial for you to create your own very personalized workflow. And since the documentation online is extremely outdated, several years outside, then, you know, this course is literally the only complete source of knowledge on these add-ons on internet. And it's fantastic. It's our second edition. People love it. It's, you know, one of the best selling courses that we have. So grab it. It's called the ultimate guide to hard ups and box cutter. The link is also in the video description and all the courses are available on our site, blenderbros.com. So that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.